Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Sir Alex Ferguson Challenge with Sheffield United. In today's episode we are going to play the very first game of our Champions League group stage campaign for this season. We will also play Norwich away from home in the Premier League. But let's review the fixtures that you've missed since the last time we met. So I'll just start this with the start of the season has been absolutely fantastic the first game in the Premier League was against Fulham at home which we ended up winning 4-1 Jean-Pierre Erling Haaland and Dodo with two goals Dodo from right wing back has been absolutely magnificent we then played Arsenal in the European Super Cup so Europa League winners against Champions League winners and we ran away 2-0 Dodo once again with another goal and Jean-Pierre in the 86th minute confirming our victory we then went away from home against Wolves, who've got a decent side in the Premier League, and we ended up winning 3-0. Erling Haaland with a top, uh, double, and Dodo with a 95th minute goal. As you can see, our right wing back is our most consistent scorer. Then we went away from home and got a very, very fortunate 1-1 away draw against Manchester United. They took the lead in the 36th minute, and they did sort of dominate the game. They didn't create too many chances but they were dominant and it took to the 89th minute. We went all out, we went very attacking and it actually paid off for once as Erling Haaland got the goal to get us a vital away point. We then had a home tie against Crystal Palace where we didn't actually play that well despite what the match stats looked like. We didn't really create too many opportunities but thankfully Haaland from the penalty spot and Esposito opening his scoring for the campaign in the 56th minute got us the win. And then this was a game and a half. I was going to bring you the Burnley game, but then I thought we'll play Norwich instead away from home after such a good start. But I wish I'd brought you this one as we ended up winning 5-4 at home. Haaland with an early hat-trick 20 minutes in, an own goal from Ado uh, if that's how you say his name, and a 49th minute goal in an extra time of added time. And then Burnley just came back into it in the second half. We really, really did not perform in the second half. But thankfully, we ended up holding on and we got the full three points. And this is how the Premier League looks. After those set of results, we currently sit in 13, uh, on 13 points, top of the table, level on points with Chelsea. And we are far exceeding expectations so far in the Premier League. If we take a look at the club vision, our Premier League expectation is to qualify for the Europa League. And we are doing that handily. We're doing incredibly well. Our manager performance is currently rated at a B. But I think if our form keeps us the way it is, that will rapidly increase. In terms of the squad and who's been performing, as you've seen, Haaland and Dodo have been mainstays in the first 11. Do uh, Danny Olmo with six assists in six games from central midfield. And the rest of the boys are perform performing well as well. I'm getting Wayne Knowles as much game time as humanly possible. I want to make him a very, very good striker who will hopefully be in my squad for the long term. We'll see how that goes. Uh, one season of development with me forcing him in there may be a loan season out we'll see how it goes with him but let's get to today's game which is against Shakhtar and we'll check our Champions League group we've drew Barcelona which isn't ideal but Shakhtar and Rosenberg are definitely winnable ties for us uh, with the sort of level of our squad that we've got now so I'm not too concerned about qualifying for the first knockout stage which is an expectation from our board our first season in the Champions League and they're already expecting us to qualify from the group but that's not too bad We'll play the game against Shakhtar, I think, was it away from home? It was away from home. Our first uh, Champions League game for this season. Some other news before we get into it. We have signed a new deal with Jerome Onjin. As soon as the transfer window uh, shut around Europe, I think it was the 4th of September, the promise I'd made to him that I would accept any offer of £60 million and above. Um, that went away and suddenly he was willing. He want, He came to me asking for a new contract straight away. So we have tied him, tied him down for the long term. And we've actually done the same with the vast majority of our squad. If I quickly show you the contracts. As you can see, there's only two players running out of contract at the end of the season. George Baldock and Kuenka, who is of course on loan. Bruno Amione is the next one after that in uh, three years' time. And then everybody else has got at least four years still left on their deal. So uh, all of our mainstay players, they won't be leaving because of a lack of contract. It will be because I actually want to sell them. But this is how we're going to line up for today's game. It won't be Mons on at left wing back. Uh, we will look to get Josh Tymon on the bench for somebody who's going to be the sacrificial lamb. It's going to be Mons on the second striker. So, Pickford in goal, Bella Kocha, Batella and Onjin as our centre-backs. Dodo and Pellegrini as our wing-backs. Renato Sanchez is going to start alongside Danny Olmo in the centre of midfield. Jean-Pierre is going to be in behind, of course, Erling Haaland and Sebastiano Esposito. 
With the way we are playing at the minute, I'm hoping this will be a pretty routine victory. But of course, it's our first time in the Champions League. Shakhtar are going to be no mugs. Um, they are obviously going to give us a good game. But let's see how we get on. A standard 4-4-2. I'm not sure how our tactic performs against that. But I guess we'll find out together. First highlight of the game. Shakhtar deep in their own half of the throw. And they give the ball away to Renato Sanchez. Who makes his way into the box. And that is an awful strike, Renato. You shouldn't be doing that. Another highlight now, and it is a throw-in deep in their half, which the win back and Russin can come forward. He's drove about 50, 60 yards there, but thankfully we're able to intercept his passenger Jean-Pierre and drive down this right-hand side, finds Esposito. It was a good first touch, but he takes it away from him. Pell Pellegrini with the header onto the bar. Another highlight now, we'll start with Renato Sanchez in the midfield, switches the player beautifully to Pellegrini, who brings it down nice. He gets a ball in, Haaland. With an absolutely crucial chance there. He should be putting that in the back of the net. Another highlight now. Corner for Danny Olmo. Plays it in. Esposito's there. And he clips the bar as well. <laughs> is it going to be one of them games? I can feel it. Can you feel it? And that is the end of the first half. A dominant performance by us. But poor in the final third. Should have had a couple of goals there. Erling Haaland in particular. With that header. It, anywhere on target. I don't think the keeper's getting to it. But um, we'll kick off for the second half. No changes currently. I'm happy with how things are going in terms of general player. But we need to start seeing our strikers stepping up. Renato Sanchez now switches the player once again to Luca Pellegrini. Who drives in the box. Haaland's back post. He hits the bar. And is merely manages to get a clear. Once again, another key opportunity for Erling Haaland. That goes unanswered. 25 minutes to go. We're going to have to look to make a substitution here. Esposito, he's having a very, very poor season. We're going to get Wayne Knowles, our young English striker, on for him. And we're also going to get Josh Tymon on for Luca Pellegrini at that left wing back spot. Another highlight now, Tymon and Wayne Knowles con uh, combining. And Wayne Knowles goes for the volley. That would have been a hell of a story. He was offside anyway, but that would have been nice to see him bury that in the back of the net. Another highlight now, straight away afterwards, Renato Sanchez picks up the ball, drives into the box. And it goes wide as well. We are really banging on the door right now. Just not creating. We've asked the boys to be more expressive and dribble more at the Shakhtar defence. Etheridge, uh, their goalkeeper, currently on a 7.2, which is never a good sign when uh, the opposing goalkeeper is above a 7. As Renato Sanchez dispossesses the Shakhtar defence in the midfield. He gets past his man once or twice. He gets a ball in. Jean-Pierre, Danny Olmo, the keeper was nowhere to be found. But unfortunately, there were some good blocks from the Shakhtar defence. Uh, Josh Tymon plays it in Wayne Knowles is there. 12 minutes. We're going we're going attacking. I'm not going very attacking. Just on the off chance that um, Shakhtar end up countering us. And we end up getting beat in this first game. Which wouldn't be ideal. As what might happen here. But Danny Olmo dispossesses Shakhtar. And Wayne Knowles picks up the ball. Drives at the defence. And he's in the box. Come on Wayne. If falls to Harland he's offside surely. I thought he was offside. Is it going to be given? Yeah. He's definitely offside there. Unfortunate. As you can see, dominant performance by us. We will look to make our final substitute of the game. Mariba is probably our best chance at actually creating something. We'll take off Jean-Pierre and put Danny Olmo in the attacker midfield spot. But um, right now, with only two minutes to go, that's going to be it for the first game of today's episode. A disappointing nil-nil away draw. Um, as you can look at the match, that's 39 shots. is absolutely ridiculous. But with a 7.5 average rating for Neil Etheridge, uh, a Filipino goalkeeper, absolutely fantastic performance by him and keeping us out so not ideal we'll have a look and see what Barcelona did in the other tie against Rosenberg you would imagine Barcelona's absolutely dominated them and smashed it which I'm sort of hoping for it would be convenient for me if Barcelona meet expectations and we can fight for that second place spot against Shakhtar and as we see a 5-0 win for Barcelona Let's move on to the next game, which is, of course, against Norwich City, who have had a very, very good start in the Premier League. Currently the highest goal difference in the league and sitting on in third position on 12 points. It's going to be difficult. Let's see how we get on. Only a couple of changes going into today's game against Norwich. I've decided to drop Esposito, who isn't having the greatest time of things in terms of goal scoring. I'm going to start Wayne Knowles. Erling Haaland's going to go to the advanced forward role. And we'll see how that plays out. It might be a bit of a mistake. But I really want to see if it can make any difference. Danny Olmo has moved into the attack midfield spot. And we have replaced Jean-Pierre with Iliax Mariba in the centre of midfield. In that Metzala role. Again, looking to give him more game time. Now, it does look like we've weakened our squad a little bit there. But I'm confident, at least in Mariba, that that isn't a downgrade. That's probably a side grade. Um, but with Wayne Knowles, 
He's obviously got a lot of proof. We're just looking to give him that game time to help him improve. As Norwich come at us with a 4-2-3-1. Pretty standard Norwich side. Dennis Mann, Lewis Cook, Maitland-Niles. We've seen this before. Uh, particularly Maitland-Niles was a player I went in for when he was available on a free. Who He then decided to go for Norwich. I think it was last season. Um, and he's done okay for them in the centre of midfield. But a, a decent, decent Norwich side. But one that does not does not compare to our first eleven, so we'll see how an away tie against them goes, particularly after the disappointment of the Shakhtar game. First highlight of the game, only two minutes in, and it's Norwich who are in possession on the halfway line. Thankfully, we nip the ball in, and Mariba plays Haaland in behind. Haaland one on one with the keeper. He was a little bit disappointing in the last game with the amount of opportunities that he did end up missing. But we'll have to wait and see how this game goes as the corner's played in and it's cleared. 18 minutes in and we get our second highlight of the game. It's Norwich again in possession but deep in their own half. If we can nick the ball it would be ideal but they are playing it about quite well. And it looks like they found a pocket of space on this right hand side of Bashiri. Find Dennis Mann in the box. He goes for goal. Jordan Pickford with an absolutely fantastic save. I haven't actually seen too much of Pickford in the games we've played. Um, he hasn't been called upon too many times as we have been dominant in most of them. But he's definitely an upgrade on Jack Butlin and we've seen less mistakes as a result. 20 minutes in now. Knowles nods it down for Olmo who finds Erling Haaland and again one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. Doesn't manage to put him in the back of the net. It would have been offside anyway, but we are getting dominated in this game, at least in terms of possession and chances, uh, shots on target. So we'll look to go back to a positive team mentality and see if that can make any difference as Dodo dances through the defence. And again, a good save by the Norwich keeper keeps us out and keeps us away from taking the lead as Olmo plays in the corner. Mariba gets his head on it and the keeper again with a fantastic, fantastic save. Jerome Angin picks up the ball from Jordan Pickford and finds Pellegrini who is not scared to drive forward should he be needed to and finds Dodo who again has been fantastic this season and that is the strangest strike I've seen on fo Football Manager at least this session. Only 40 seconds to go in this first half. Ronaldo Sanchez in a pot of space on the edge. Tries to play it in. Danny Olmo finds Dodo. If he can get that back post, there's men there. He gets tripped. He gets tripped, ref. Where's the penalty? It falls to... Uh, we, don't, we don't want the penalty. Luca Pellegrini with his second goal of the season. Some fantastic work by Dodo. The assist is accredited to Danny Olmo. We'll see this again in the replay. This was definitely a penalty here. He definitely trips him. Doesn't get anywhere near the ball. Thankfully... We end up coming out up trumps anyway, but I would have been disappointed if we weren't to have scored from this opportunity and not have got the penalty. But Luca Pellegrini, with his weak foot as well, managed to put it in the bottom corner and puts us 1-0 up before half time. In terms of the second half, no changes required. Let's kick off and see. Give it the first 20 or so to see how Norwich actually react to um, going 1-0 down. First highlight of the second half, seven minutes in. It's us in possession with Pellegrini on this left-hand side. He gets dispossessed by Cook, though. And Norwich can come forward and drive in between the defensive midfield. Emmy's in behind. Goes just wide. We're still on positive. They have went to an attack and team mentality. Should I react to that right now and go balanced? I think I'm going to, with only half an hour remaining. And Danny Olmo with a free kick. He goes for goal. Good save by the keeper. It ends up in the back of the net somehow, and it's going... It's going to be an own goal. Marko Vuskovic getting the own goal for Norwich. <laughs> getting the own goal. It's not really uh, a great thing. But Danny Olmo with a decent free kick. A good save by the keeper. I think it's going wide anyway. But as Norwich tried to clear it, Bushiri actually ends up hitting the defender. And it goes in very, very uh, thankfully for us. It was pretty fortunate. As we'll look to make some changes, we will look to get Renato Sanchez off our engine in the middle of midfield. We always need to protect him a little bit and we'll get Marcus Antonio on in his place. And I would actually like to move Danny Olmo back, get Mariba off and get Lucas Nunes on our other youngster who I'm looking to give as much game time as possible. So we will do that just now. Uh, Mariba comes off. Lucas Nunes comes on. We've got one more sub with only 20 minutes remaining. We'll see if we need it. Another highlight now with only 16 minutes in the match. Still to go Haaland with a lovely little through ball for Luca Pellegrini. He's in behind once again. And Pellegrini is showing how a strike is how it's done one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. His third goal of the season. Haaland with a beautiful assist as well. We'll see it here in the replay. He brings it down quite nicely. Not under too much pressure, but that's a lovely little through ball. Dragging the defender out. And Pellegrini has all the time in the world to find the back of the net. 3-0. Game over. 12 minutes to go. It is Norwich on the attack this time, but oh, oh, oh. 
<laughs> Did you have visions? I had visions. That wasn't going to go so well. But Onjin with a very, very cool, calm and collected header back to Pickford. That doesn't end up in a mistake. Onjin finds Danny Olmo through ball for Erling Haaland. He's got the pace on the defender. Can he get the ball in? It comes back to Danny Olmo after the keeper makes a decent first save. And we go 4-0 up. Absolutely thrashing one of the best sides in the league currently, might I add. Which is absolutely fantastic. Haaland does well. I'm a little disappointed he goes for goal from this angle. But thankfully the keeper doesn't deal with it in the best way. And Danny Olmo follows up his initial pass to get his first goal of the season. And 4 0 with only 10 minutes to go. We'll look to see if one of the boys' legs. Pelic. Oh, can I take him off? He's on a hat trick. We're going to get George Baldock on for Dodo in that right wing back spot. And we'll keep Pellegrini on in the hopes he can get his hat trick. But with only 5 minutes to go, we're kind of counting Norwich out, at least getting a goal back as they go for goal once again and go just wide. Pickford would not have got that in a million years. And there we are. Time is ticking away and full time. Norwich nil, Sheffield United 4. An absolutely fantastic performance by the boys, especially coming off the back of a disappointing nil-nil draw against Shakhtar. Really, really pleased. And there's the Premier League table, how it currently sits after that game. We sit top of the league, two points clear from Manchester City in second and three points clear from Chelsea in third. Erling Haaland, top goal scorer. Danny Olmo, highest average rate. And Danny Olmo with the most assists. We have started fantastically. Now, of course, we're only six games in, so we can't get too carried away. But I think maintaining the squad as it was last season whilst um, boosting the general strength of the depth that we've got is really paying dividends. And hopefully we can see a pay dividends for a long time to come. Now looking forward to the next episode. I don't really want to play Barcelona right now. I'll look to play Barca in the final Champions League group game. Maybe the episode after next. So the next episode will be Rosenborg. And we either play Leeds or Spurs. Depending on who's doing better in the league. Spurs are currently sitting second bottom. So it may end up being them. But anyway. Thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed today's video. If you did. Please leave a like. And there's plenty of you watching who are not currently subscribed. So please get yourself subscribed. But until next time. Take it easy.